Thank you, Twitter followers, for telling me that I should interview Travis. And now I'm doing it, living out my largest dream in life. I'm Kelsey here with Travis Gafford with coverage presented by Omni Slash. When's the last time you weren't behind the mic, Travis? Uh, I think at the start of the split, I got interviewed by Zareen from eSports something. I forget the name of her company. She's going to yell at me about this. She'll never see it. Uh, either way, it's, yeah, she interviewed me at the start. But I think that was the last time. What was it about? <laughs> about LCS and the fact that I was here, uh, I guess, or just how things are going for me. Because it was at the start of the split, and so I just started doing interviews again and just my general thought about all that stuff, yeah. So I'll, I'll take a note from her book. How is LCS going in your eyes? Okay, you're just going to steal her questions. Uh, LCS is going okay. Uh, week eight has been kind of whatever. I mean, it's weird in that I think more than any other split, playoffs has already been kind of decided. And, and so we kind of have an idea, like almost everyone's locked in. It makes week nine far less interesting. But there's a couple, of a couple teams that are doing stuff out, and we also see the rise of the like endemics or whatever. By the way, I know enough about cameras to know that a whole area just turned super bright white, which is really funny because the sun came out. But uh, yeah, I think that it's a little less exciting than the end of most splits that we've seen, but it's still kind of cool to see CLG, TL, TSM, and Cloud9's losing a little bit, but you know they're still up there. Like the old guys start to like take their stake back in the ground uh, from Echo Fox and a couple other teams that were showing up a lot. So a lot of you might, or a lot of you don't know this, but I interviewed Travis way back before the split started for a personal project. And I asked him, who does he think is going to be uh, you know, the standout for this split? And he said Team Liquid, surprisingly. Hi, Reggie. You wanna, you wanna say hi? <laughs> Reg uh, there's Reg there's yeah, Reggie yeah. right behind. Yeah. Hi. Reg Reggie actually oh, always tries hey, to Hey, what's up? Me. I love you guys both. Yeah, thank you. Oh, I'm Andy. Uh, yeah, bye, Andy. Anyways, so he said that he's really excited to see Team Liquid this split. I think that was a commonality of a lot of people. How do you feel now that it's week eight and... Sorry, I am I was excited to see Team Liquid? Yes. Did you talk to me? You were excited. You can move the microphone. Oh, <laughs> uh, so... Whenever, so when you interviewed me, I said I was excited to see how Team Liquid did because they were building a super team. I think that narrative is like far less interesting to me now. Because like the Echo Fox thing ended up being much more of the super team than Team Liquid. And Team Liquid just continues to be kind of like how Team Liquid historically has been, which is like, are they going to be something interesting? Or are they not? It, it really is going to come down to playoffs to see if they actually end up pulling something off. So we were talking about this a little bit in the press box earlier. Yeah. Now that it's kind of coming to a close, the spring split, who are, what's your opinion on MVP? MVP, oh, who should be MVP? This is really hard. So I had, it basically was like Huni, Dardock, Smoothie, um, and then Equifax started losing a lot, and I think Dardock hasn't looked as good recently. Uh, no offense, Dardock, if he sees this, he hopefully doesn't cuss me out. Uh, but I, so now I actually don't know, maybe Smoothie, but Cloud9 also has been dropping some games. Um... Uh, so I know a lot of people have been talking about Febivin. I don't know. It's actually really difficult now because, like, everything's getting topsy-turvy at the end here. So we'll find out, I guess, after next week. But I do actually think it's going to be a much harder decision than I previously expected. So unrelated, and I always actually wondered this, but do you actually play League? Yeah. Actually, so lately I've been playing mostly Arams because it's just more fun. I play with a lot of friends that are of various skill levels and various desire to win and thus aram is like better for us to play together also i've been playing too many video games lately because i've been traveling i just got back from vancouver i'm going south by southwest this week and i've been working on a bunch of different content but i do play league i main blitzcrank god hand, god hand gafford that was a nice sponsor plug i don't know if that was intentional no, or not, not south by southwest just throwing that in there by the way no, no, no. it's i'm going to i'm not they're not sponsoring this i'm just going to that event because i'm like i'm doing a panel thing there you just, you ask your question, I'm answering it. Yes, that's what an interview is, Travis. Surprising. Um, what else was I going to ask? Oh, yeah, so you just said that you went to Vancouver, mm -hmm. and so you got away from everything for a little bit. How do you manage the stress of being the forefront in interviewing at the LCS or in on on-camera interviewing? Well, <laughs> I think there's not too much stress in doing this part of my job because I have done this for a long time now. It's more, 
you know, I don't, I don't tend to talk about this too much, but there, the parts of my life that are more stressful right now are the fact that I'm like basically building a business and like trying to figure out how to make that work and like finding the right people to work with and how do I make sure that those people get paid and all that stuff. So there's a lot of stress that kind of goes along with all that stuff. Uh, a lot of other people have far more stress, so I try not to talk about mine, but you know, all that. And then it's always like family stuff and friend stuff and all that stuff. So it does kind of get up to you. So it was kind of nice to go visit some friends in Vancouver this past week. But uh, I, yeah, like the interview stuff, like this is okay. Uh, sometimes I get an argument with the team owner because they don't like an interview that I did or they, whatever. That's annoying, but so I'm keeping an eye because I have to interview Brixton in a second. But uh, for the most part, this part is not stressful. It is stressful whenever it rains all day on a Saturday. I have to do all my interviews inside, though. That sucks. I, I like doing them outside. Seems like you're not really prioritizing this interview, this special time that we have together. I'm, I'm very hurt right now. Maybe yeah. I'll just end it now. So I assume you're going to Florida for finals. Are you excited to go to Florida? Have you ever been there? I've been to Tallahassee twice. Both times I was disappointed that I went to Tallahassee. Uh, but Miami I'm pretty excited about. I think it's going to be really cool. Um, and I, we're trying, we, I'm trying to do some special stuff there for fans and for my YouTube channel. So we will see what ends up happening. But yeah, really trying to do some like, like how do I, you know, in the past I go to these finals events. You know, I did something with Double Lift last year for Vancouver, but for the most part, it's like just the same old, same old interviews. And I am trying to figure out how do you make like a special, like a more elaborate, cooler thing out of all that. So that's what, that's what I'm going to try and do. Yeah, I was hearing from some uh, rumors swirling around that you might do interviews on a yacht in Miami. No, no, no interviews on a yacht. Not one this time. Of, one of the team owners suggested using getting a yacht as an Airbnb. You guys can walk back if you need. Okay. Uh, if you getting doing some interviews on a or sorry, Airbnb being a yacht with a bunch of people. Uh, but I'm probably just gonna go for a hotel because actually at the end of the day you need like consistent internet and stuff. That's true. I don't think you get good internet in the middle of the ocean. Yeah. Especially well, in Florida. I think technically the yacht would probably be anchored. I don't think it would be in the middle of the ocean. Like I think it like those Airbnb. I don't think you take the yacht out as an Airbnb. It's more like you just go on the dock and then you live on the yacht while it's docked. To be clear. That's very intellectual. I'm so glad I know that now. <laughs> but um, what do you think of the meta? What do I think of the meta? Uh, I think it's really interesting to see the. Canon minion meta that ends up happening. Like, so I was watching in the audience the other day, and I'm sure a lot of people have heard this on the stream, but it's actually really fun whenever there's a barrened up Canon minion uh, that is going to town on a inhibitor or a tower, and everybody literally starts like counting down the hits because each one of them feels so significant. It's kind of this cool way that adds and brings a lot of tension to the the game, and I think in a way that we haven't seen in a while. Uh, and gives people something to cheer for that isn't kills and isn't ward kills. So, I don't know. I actually really like that aspect of it right now. You, All right. Did you think that that, did you expect that was going to go differently? Yes. I expected him to laugh and then be like, we're cutting this, we're cutting this. Yeah. Ah, okay. Hmm. hmm. So, I just realized, and I don't know if everybody knows this, but Peter, a.k.a. Double Lift. And Travis live in the same apartment complex. I think that's kind of interesting. Because, I don't know, there's all these rumors swirling about you two being an item. And then, you know, but do you have anything to comment on that? Uh, no comment. Well, you heard it here first. They're dating officially. <laughs> now, but do you have anything to tell the fans out there? Oh, so like at the of end, you. Uh, just, are you. Is this about me and Peter or are we wrapping the interview? This interview has gone very interesting, and I don't know where it actually is going, but so I'm just going to end it. Do you have anything to tell your fans, either about you or you and Peter, or you by yourself? Is there any way they can support you, like a website? Yeah, thank you uh, for to OmniSlash for sponsoring all the LCS coverage. Really appreciate that. And uh, thanks to everybody who supports on Patreon, on Twitch, all that stuff. I have a support page, which is traviscaffer.com slash support. And I really appreciate all the uh, nice messages that I've been getting. I can't reply to all of them, but I do actually read a lot of them. I don't appreciate the mean messages that I get, uh, but I also read all those too. Uh, so, yeah, thank you so much.
Well, awesome. Well, thank you for the interview. That was a wild ride, to say the least. For everyone else, if you want to catch all things esports, check out the channel. Some of you may not know this, but I'm actually graduating in June, and right now I don't have a job because Travis can barely hold himself together. So if anyone's looking for a paleobiology major that is kind of good at interviewing LCS players, make sure to hit me up. But anyways, thank you Omni Slash, and remember to subscribe and like the video.